Yes, I'm Pastor Robert Nichols and my wife Tamara Nichols. And uh, we've been partners with KCM for about six years now. Robert and I were getting ready to run errands. And just before I left, I said, oh yeah, baby, put your helmet on. I had just left the house and I was only about half a mile away. And I was in the right-hand lane at a major intersection in our town. As I was waiting, the light just turned green and then I felt a jolt and I'm in the air. What happened was a woman, she hit me going about 35, 40 miles an hour. I mean, immediate ejection off of the seat. And I do land on my feet. But when I go to take my first step, I feel another smack that lands me flat down onto my stomach. And it was the woman still pressing on the gas of her vehicle. The lower half of my body is under her vehicle. I push up like I'm doing a push up uh, with my chest, to get my chest away from the ground. And I'm yelling at my helmet, stop the car. I said, you are not running me over. Stop the car. So we're still moving forward. I rotate so that my left hand is off the ground and I stiff arm the bumper so that I can get from underneath a little bit more. And I'm pulling my knees towards my chest so that my feet don't get sucked under the driver's side front tire. And she finally comes to a stop. So I worm my way out and I, and I crawl out from underneath the vehicle. And I just stand up and I'm yelling at her, what are you doing? I'm still, my helmet's still close, she can't hear me. <laughs> She's in her car, the windows are rolled up, but she is so frightened. And I see people just starting to run towards me from every area of the intersection. And here they go say, lay down, just lay down. I said, okay. So I just lay back down on the ground. And as I lay down, I take off my gloves, I unbuckle my helmet, set it to the side, unzip my jacket, I pull out my phone, and I dial my wife to run. And by that time, the first gentleman gets to me from the gas station, and I just hand him the phone and said, here, tell her what happened. And I hand him the phone. And a gentleman said, I don't know whose phone this is, but uh, this guy just got hit by a car. And um, we're at such and such location. I said, does he need an ambulance? And he said, oh yeah, I, I, he definitely needs an ambulance. I said, okay, thank you, and just hung up the phone and began to pray. So I'm looking up into the, to the sky and it's so sunny, so I have to close my eyes. And I'm just sitting there and I start just thanking God and praising Him and the joy of the Lord starts coming on me because I'm like, Satan, you are so stupid. I am gonna ride again. I said, this is not gonna strike fear in me. I said, I'm not letting any fear come in. And I was about 50 feet away when I first got there and there was a big crowd around him and I could hear people talking about this, this lady just didn't stop. She just hit him from behind and she didn't stop. And they pointed out the driver of the car to me. And anger tried to come up at, for a second. And I was really angry. Like, why didn't you stop? Because I can hear people saying, she just didn't stop. She just rammed right into him and drug him. At that moment, instead of being angry with her, I just, I forgave her, I released it. And I was like, Lord, help her. And I just walked up to her and I said, are you okay? And um, yeah, yeah, she was just really freaked out about it. But um, I said, I, I hold no fault with you. And that's something I've heard Brother Copeland say, you know, to forgive people. And I just, I released it at that point into the hands of the Lord. So they put me through uh, MRI and other CAT scans just to make sure broken bones or other things. And sure enough, um, all test results came back negative and they watched me walk up and down the hallway a couple times just to prove I could do it <laughs> and I had balance. And then, you know, they released me home. You know, you would think in the natural there would be injuries from being run over or being dragged uh, 70 feet, but his clothes were completely untouched. If you're partners with, with KCM, you're, you're in the front line and the enemy doesn't like what you're doing um, for furthering the gospel. And you have to know your rights as a believer and we're sent as ambassadors. And although Satan tries things, you can come out on top. When, when the enemy attacks you, he's not just attacking you, he's attacking God, he's attacking Jesus, he's attacking the entire kingdom of heaven because you have their full backing. And he couldn't win before, he can't win now.